When two or more quantities are related by an equation, then their rates of change over time are also related. That's the idea behind related rates, and this video gives an example of related rates involving distances. A tornado is 20 miles west of us, heading due east towards Phillips Hall at a rate of 40 miles per hour. You hop on your bike and ride due south at a speed of 12 miles per hour. How fast is the distance between you and the tornado changing after 15 minutes? In a related rates problem, it's always a good idea to draw a picture first. That can help you uncover the geometry of the problem and see how quantities are related. In this problem, we have a right triangle because the tornado is traveling due east and the bicycle is traveling due south at right angles. Let's assign variables to the quantities of interest. I'll call the distance between the tornado and Phillips Hall A. Although it starts at 20 miles, it varies with time, and therefore it's a good idea to assign it a letter, a variable. I'll use B to refer to the distance between Phillips Hall and the bicycle, a quantity that also varies with time. And I'll let C stand for the distance between the tornado and the bicycle. The problem asks us to find how fast this distance is changing, in other words, dc dt. The next step is to write down equations that relate the quantities of interest. In this problem, we know by the Pythagorean theorem that a squared plus b squared equals c squared. We're interested in how fast the distance between you and the tornado is changing. That's a rate of change. And the rate at which the bicycle is traveling and the tornado is moving, these are also rates of change. In order to work these rates of change into the problem, I'm going to take the derivative of both sides of this equation with respect to time. That's the third step. So I'm going to take d dt of a squared plus b squared, and that's equal to d dt of c squared. Notice that I'm thinking of a, b, and c as functions of t here, since they vary over time. On the left side, I get 2a times da dt, using the chain rule, plus 2b db dt, and on the right side I get 2c dc dt. Now I can use the information given to me in the problem to plug in numbers and solve for the quantity of interest, dc dt. Since the tornado is moving at a rate of 40 miles per hour, the distance between the tornado and Phillips Hall is decreasing at 40 miles per hour. In other words, dA dt is negative 40. That negative sign is important here and comes from the fact that the distance is decreasing. Since the bicycle is moving at 12 miles per hour, the distance between Phillips Hall and the bicycle is increasing at a rate of 12 miles per hour. So dB dt is positive 12. The quantities a, b, and c are constantly changing, but at the time of interest, t equals 15 minutes, or in hours, 0 0.25 hours, we can figure out what a, b, and c are. The tornado starts 20 miles away, but it's moving at a rate of 40 miles per hour, so after a quarter of an hour, it's gone 10 miles. That means after a quarter of an hour, it's only 10 miles away. And so at the time of 0.25 hours, A equals 10. The bike is moving at 12 miles per hour, so after a quarter of a mile, it's gone 3 miles. And so at this time, B equals 3. Now, using the same equation we started with, we can plug in A and B and solve for C. We know that C squared is going to be 10 squared plus 3 squared, so C is going to be the square root of 109. Plugging the numbers into this equation, we get 2 times 10 times negative 40 plus 2 times 3 times 12 equals 2 times the square root of 109 times dc dt. So dc dt is going to be negative 800 plus 72 over 2 times the square root of 109, which is approximately negative 35. 
In other words, the distance between the tornado and us is decreasing at 35 miles per hour. The tornado is gaining on us quickly. These same steps will get you through a variety of related rates problems. A couple of cautionary notes. Don't plug in numbers too soon. Any quantities that vary with time should be written as variables so you can properly take their derivatives with respect to time. In addition, be careful to use negative numbers for negative rates of change. That is, for quantities that are decreasing. We wouldn't have gotten the right answer if we hadn't have used a negative 40 for the rate of change of the distance here. In this video, we solved a related rates problem and found that riding a bicycle may not be the best way to escape a tornado.